My name is Dr. Nazbun Naharatna. I'm a Bangladeshi New Zealander working at the Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce, Lincoln University, New Zealand. The market intervention for nutritional improvement using micro simulation methods to assess the potential of a produce aggregation service to improve availability and affordability of fresh produce, or as we like to call it the mini project, is an international research program co-founded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the UK government's Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. MINI aims to understand the opportunities, challenges, and trade-offs of aggregation and market intervention projects and their ability to impact the availability and affordability of fruits and vegetables in markets that serve nutritionally vulnerable consumers in Joshua, Bangladesh, and Bihar, India. A segment of MINI also examines poultry market interventions in Ghana. Today, we will mostly be sharing the observations from our research in Joshua, Bangladesh. The MINI project is led by researchers of the University of Sheffield, the International Livestock Research Institute, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, Bangladesh Agricultural University, Lincoln University, and Digital Green International. Before I outline some of the housekeeping details, on behalf of the mini team, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to the panel speakers today. We have four distinguished panelists today, Dr. Shamsul Alun Sir, Member Planning Commission and Senior Secretary, Minister of Planning, Mr. Mohammad Yusuf, Director General, Department of Agricultural Marketing, Ministry of Agriculture, Dr. Ruhul Amin Talukdar, Additional Secretary, Policy Planning and Coordination Wing, Minister of Agriculture, and Dr. Sheikh Mohammed Bokhtiar, Executive Chairman, Bangladesh Agricultural Research Council. In the middle of all the challenges Bangladesh is facing due to COVID and now Cyclone Niaz, we, the mini team, are very fortunate to be able to share our research results with you. Now some announcement in terms of housekeeping. Please note that we will be recording this webinar. We will share the recordings with all of you after the webinar. We have your emails from the registration. We'll be disabling the chat, but you can use it now in case of any technical problems. You can ask questions using the Q&A box, and we will keep an eye on the questions you raise and bring questions and comments to the speaker's attention when we come to the discussion. Some of the speakers may answer your questions in the Q&A box, so keep an eye on it. We will have three parts to the presentation today. The first part will focus on horticultural system of Bangladesh and the headline findings from the mini project with regards to making digital greens aggregation schemes more nutritionally sensitive. The second, provide insights from impact of loop aggregation on farmers' output, income, and vegetable consumption and dietary diversity in Bangladesh. And third, vegetable safety practices along the value chain. After these three presentations, there will be a summary of the policy implications and followed by a Q&A session to address any questions that emerge from the panel presentations delivered. We have several speakers, but we will have time for discussion at the end of all the presentations. We will be launching some polls throughout the webinar, so please stay tuned for those. We had 109 registrants from 11 countries, so we may not be able to answer all your question but we will do our best. Note that you can give a thumbs up and comment on the question that others ask. If there are questions that we are unable to answer today, we will be sure to follow up with you. Before we delve into the discussions today, we would like to take a quick poll. Please take a moment 
to respond to the two questions on your screen. The question we asked was, how do you describe yourself? We see that 9% of the participants are policymakers, 71% are researchers, 6% NGO staff, and 11% technical specialist markets, 3% technical specialist nutrition. I would like I would now like to invite Dr. Nomita Singh, Director, Strategy, Knowledge, and MEL, Digital Green. Dr. Singh will give an introduction of Loop Aggregation Scheme. She has been working with Digital Green for seven years and led the programmatic aspects of the mini project. She's an international development sector professional and research scholar with 13 years of experience in participatory technologies, rural development, and gender. Dr. Nomita. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ratna. Um, so I think where I'll, I'll, I'll start uh, at is that you know Digital Green has been working in the sector of agriculture development uh, uh, more than 13 years now. And over the years, we've observed that although smallholder farmers produce a large portion of the world's food supply, they are the ones who often live in poverty and are malnutrition. Uh, they tend to buy inputs at high retail prices and sell at low wholesale rates and missing out on potential gains when dealing in, in bulk. And the problem is augmented actually for horticulture farmers given the crop's uh, perishable nature, which increases dependence on local middlemen, uh, money lenders and markets as farmers struggle against time to sell their harvested produce before it rots. So most smallholder farmers face several factors that combine to create lower margins for their primary cash producing livelihood activity. They deal in low volumes that prevent them from tapping into cost savings and better pricing that comes with economies of scale. Uh, they lack adequate up-to-date information on pricing, which hinders their ability uh, to identify accessible markets offering uh, higher prices for the perishable produce. They usually spend anywhere from half to a full day traveling to a market, absorbing high opportunity costs for low returns. They also pay high transportation costs relative to their small individual load size, load size which eats into their earning margins. Uh, so uh, a, a few years ago, Digital Green to address some of these issues came up with Loop, which is a shared transport service. And it's it was initiated to benefit small and marginal vegetable farmers, uh, started in uh, Bihar, extended to other states in India then, and in, in Bangladesh uh, using technology solutions. Uh, so Loop is an AI-based vehicle and market uh, optimization system to realize better prices for the vegetables. Uh, DG worked around with around 25,000 uh, farmers and has benefited farmers to reduce transportation costs by 45% through aggregation, 29% increase in price realized through arbitrage activities. And it is worthwhile to mention that farmers also save four to six hours of time per market trip. And the save time has been utilized for other agricultural uh, activities. So this, this was a brief on Loop. I'll also uh, share a very short video on uh, Loop with you.
uh, from my side over to you, uh, Dr. Ratna. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Singh, for your very informative piece. Before we delve into the project findings, I would like to acknowledge the challenges faced by our attendees from different parts of the world. Those who are battling with COVID, on behalf of the MINI team, we wish them a speedy recovery. And we convey a very special thanks to all attending from Bangladesh and India, India where we face excruciating pain and sorrow. Moving on, to make sure we keep our messages clear and within the allotted time, we have pre-recorded some of our presentations. However, we also have all our research team with us on this webinar. So please post your questions in the Q&A box. Coming up now is a pre-recorded presentation by the principal investigator, Professor Bhavani Shankar. Bhavani Shankar is a professor, professorial research fellow in food systems and health at the Institute of Sustainable Food University of Sheffield and is principal investigator for the mini project. He is an applied economist working on research areas at the intersection of food system, nutrition, health, and sustainability. His current research interests include food markets and nutrition, equity in food system, sustainable diets, and food and nutrition policy evaluation. A native of Chennai, he studied at the University of Madras and JNU before obtaining a PhD from the University of Illinois at Arbana Champaign. Professor Shankar. Hello everyone, glad you could be with us today. My name is Bhavani Shankar and I'm principal investigator for the mini project. Now we know that fruits and vegetables intakes are absolutely vital for human nutrition and human health. Not only because they are key sources of micronutrients, the essential vitamins and minerals that are so critical for human growth and human function, but also because they have a key role to play in lowering the risk of cardiovascular disease and some cancers. Now, Bangladesh is fighting a rising tide of diet-related chronic disease, and fruits and vegetables are a key ally in that fight. But the problem is the Bangladesh population is highly deficient in the intakes of fruits and vegetables. The World Health Organization's norm is 400 grams per person per day of fruit and vegetable income. And if you look at the data from Bangladesh's non-communicable disease risk factor survey, it tells us that 83% of the population is below that norm. So we're quite a long way away from where we need to be. Now, many projects' point of departure for how the situation could be improved is to analyze markets as the mechanism uh, for delivering fruits and vegetables equitably and efficiently to the population. But why are we focusing on markets? Firstly, Bangladesh, like many other rapidly growing countries, is urbanizing rapidly. And the proportion of non-farm population is increasing steadily. So in coming decades, we have to find a way to deliver more nutritious foods, like fruits and vegetables, to this increasing non-farm segment. Secondly, the poorest people are often landless, with no prospect of growing fruits and vegetables for themselves. And so they are quite market dependent. Also, markets are inherently scalable, considering that they emerge from a human instinct to buy, sell, and transact. So the big question is, can we shape these markets to deliver nutritious foods more efficiently and more efficiently? Finally, even if you are interested specifically in the nutrition of smallholder farmers, note that they are very often net buyers. So they actually buy more food from the market than they sell. They will sell during times of plenty, they'll buy back from the market during the lean periods. And these are all reasons for seeking to, deliver, uh, to, to leverage markets to deliver nutrition. So Mini's research is based upon this fundamental understanding that improving market availability and affordability of fruits and vegetables is key to nutrition in Bangladesh. In Mini, we focus on aggregation as a market intervention to increase fruit and vegetable supply to the market. As we know, aggregation, especially in horticulture, uh, is becoming popular around the world. Now, aggregation essentially involves organizing farmers to do collective marketing, collective transportation, collective selling to traders and markets. And in Bangladesh, Digital Green's loop aggregation scheme started piloting an aggregation scheme in Jashore uh, in 2018. 
So Loop was essentially a, a large program started uh, originally in Bihar in India, and the pilot version of it was run in Bangladesh. A loop involves an aggregator visiting participating villages and farmers on a regular basis, picking up produce, organizing collective transportation to the wholesale market, doing collective bargaining with the Aradars, and once the vegetables have been sold, to relay the payments back to the farmers with digital receipts. Now, many as researchers asking, using loop as our case study, what the implications of aggregation are for availability and affordability in nutritionally vulnerable markets. We train special focus on what we call nutritionally vulnerable markets in the sense of smaller markets, perhaps markets that are not very lucrative, maybe they, you can call them neglected markets, uh, markets which are essentially uh, especially relevant from an equity perspective, markets in small towns, semi-rural areas, or semi-urban areas, for example. And then we ask the question, how can aggregation be made more equitable and more nutrition sensitive? To answer these research questions, we have a study structure uh, that can be divided into two parts. In the first part, we carry out a value change assessment using some transaction level data from Loop, a survey of the literature, a series of semi-structured interviews, and focus group discussions involving the range of actors, farmers, aggregators, orotars, traders, and so on. And in the second part, we carry out a modeling based on system dynamics, where we capture the value chain actors and the relationships between them uh, in the context of the fruit and vegetable marketing system. And this work is informed by the value chains assessment, but also by data from a household survey uh, that we did all, all along the value chain. We also collected extensive qualitative information on food safety aspects. Also, we carried out a series of group model building exercises. Um, where the model was developed in a participatory fashion with farmers, aggregators, and other value chain actors. And we also analyzed the survey data using econometrics to find out how loop participation benefits farmers. And you'll hear a lot more about these different strands of work in the next few presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Bhavani Shankar. Uh, next up, we have a pre recorded presentation by. Professor Mohammad Jahangir Alam on the MINI project. Professor Alam, along with MINI team, has been modeling the future scenarios and interventions that may help to increase the availability of fruits and vegetables in relatively small markets in Joshua, Bangladesh, while at the same time promoting the revenues of aggregating farmers. Dr. Mohammad Jahangir Alam is a professor at the Department of Agribusiness and Marketing. Bangladesh Agriculture University, Mamanshing. Professor Alam has been co-leading the Bangladesh mini project team since March 2018. Professor Alam has spent periods of time as a visiting fellow at the Crawford School of Public Policy, Australian National University, and as a Fulbright Scholar at Cornell University, New York. He has also been a Commonwealth Fellow at SOAS University of London, and a visiting professor at DIT Ireland, where he taught global food systems. His research focus include value chain analysis, agricultural food and nutrition policies, food and nutrition security, food system, program evaluation, etc. Professor Alam's presentation will focus on the modeling work done for the Mini Bangladesh project and implications of results. Professor Jahangiram. Good afternoon. My name is Mohammed Jahangiram. I'm working in the Department of Agribusiness and Marketing at Bangladesh Agricultural University. Welcome to Dissemination Workshop on Market Intervention for Nutrition Improvement for many project. I'm going to present a part of our findings where we use system dynamics modeling approach to examine different future scenarios of loop aggregations in, in Joshua and possible uh, outcomes from simulated scenarios and implications of results. Our study aims to identify to what extent aggregation and marketing schemes can benefit farmers, whilst also improving uh, the availability and affordability of vegetables in a smaller and neglected markets. Why system dynamics modeling? Uh, system dynamics modeling captures important value chain structures, including flows, 
feedbacks and delays in the vegetables market. It facilitates participatory modeling to build in local stakeholder knowledge. So on the right side, you can see that I myself, uh, a colleague from Digital Green, uh, were actually conducting group model building session. Carl Rich in the team guided the group uh, model building session. Uh, it enables to run future scenarios in a virtual laboratory to explore outcome dynamics and trade off. So we can see that over time, uh, the loop farmers, uh, uh, scenario one and two, we can simulate and then can identify the outcomes of uh, simulations. Little bit on the model overview. Farmers populations, so total farmers population in the model uh, was 25,000, uh, split between loop and non-loop farmers. Farmers decide whether to join loop based on expected profits and guaranteed offsets. In total, 4,300 farmers were engaged in loop aggregation scheme from 30 villages across Joshua. Loop farmers are free to decide if they would like to supply to only aggregators or also to non-loop market actors, or they can transport vegetables to local markets themselves on any given day. The aggregators collect vegetables daily fresh from the farm, identify the potential best market in which to sell, manage market transport and sales uh, and distribute payments back to the farmers through mobile app. Markets in the model were divided into three categories, local large market, local small market, and local consumer market based on a special group model building and low dashboard data. The volume of vegetables supplied to the market depends on season. So the supply capacity of farmers during growing is usually higher than in 41 and 42 seasons. Local large markets were based on a large number of farmers, traders, and volume of trade. This was dominated by Shatmal Major uh, in Joshua. But 81 percent vegetables were traded, and the daily supply in the Ruby season was around 40,000 kilograms of vegetables. The number of farmers, supply capacity, and traders are less in local supply market than local uh, large markets. In local consumer markets, local retailers purchase vegetables and sell them directly to consumers. Consumers purchase vegetables for their home consumption from the local consumer markets as opposed to local large markets and local small markets. So this study aims to simulate different types of potential interventions and policies able to increase the delivery of vegetables towards uh, smaller markets whilst preserving the farmers facing benefits of irrigation participation. So those who are interested to more about the system dynamics model, I would refer to read the work published in uh, agricultural system uh, journal. The structures, parameters, values, and equations in the model were informed by six uh, data sets. These data sets are a rapid value chain, loop dashboard data, farm household survey, value chain actors survey, special group model building uh, sessions and reference group meetings. The model comprises of six major interactive modules, farm household, production and aggregation, market supply, loop cost and benefit, uh, non-loop cost and benefit, and retail demand. Here, uh, using both uh, diagrams, uh, we visualize the dynamics associated with the baseline evolution of aggregation adoption related to the identified scenarios. So we can see that the combination of different scenarios and then once at a time run scenarios and then how they produce uh, different outcomes. Uh, 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 so outcome trade-off visualizations, uh, system dynamics model develops trade-off wheels to summarize the direction, magnitudes, and significance of trade-offs across multiple outcomes and scenarios. So we track five uh, four outcomes, 
monthly average price of vegetables in local consumer markets. It's main indicator of vegetable sustainability. Uh, the resulting decrease of winter prices, the uh, results in consumer demand increases. On the other hand, the monthly look profit uh, and uh, total farmer uh, profits uh, do not change. Then scenario two, the small market direct quotas, uh, supply quota trade-offs. So we simulated supply quota where farmers are mandated to supply a minimum 30% of total aggregation to local consumer markets to improve availability and affordability. So we find that monthly average retail price decreases at local consumer market. And as a consequence, monthly average consumer demand increase. It increases availability and affordability in the local consumer market without harming farmers profits. Uh, next scenario, the large market pool limits the effectiveness of reducing local consumer market supply cost. So we simulated a scenario that low farmers receive a blanket of uh, uh, 0.25 taka per kilogram uh, subsidy for transporting their produce to any given market using low. Uh, and then we introduce a uh, 5% increase of reference price, which actually results to the increase of consumer prices in local consumer market. Uh, and uh, it increased the consumption demand in local consumer market. Then uh, we think that uh, synergetic combination are key to win-win futures. So we combined uh, uh, three different scenarios, scaling up aggregation, transport subsidies, and the introduction of cold storage. And then we find uh, retail price uh, decreases at local consumer markets. And uh, as a consequence, uh, consumer demand increases. Uh, total farmer profit decreases, but low farmers' uh, profits remain the same. So what are the key conclusions? So I'm just uh, uh, explaining in 30 seconds. Uh, its aggregation across the uh, value chain can simultaneously enable a greater proportion of farmers to reach high demand markets such as uh, local arts markets and also enable more farmers to supply uh, to local consumer markets. Policies focusing on reducing local consumer market uh, transport cost may not be enough to overcome the pull of the large market. Policies on direct quota to local consumer market benefits uh, local consumer markets, goods and vegetables, availability and affordability. Cold storage alone is not powerful enough to change supply pathways. The policymakers may need to pursue more transformative approach to generate significant consumer facing benefits. For example, blending, scaling aggregation, and the quotas together and then see uh, uh, the, the expected outcomes. Uh, and the combinations of different scenarios. Uh, the, so based on that, supply side interventions are not uh, only options to increase the purchase of fruits and vegetables in local consumer markets. Multiple interventions uh, that can increase supplies and also can increase demands in the local consumer markets. That actually would lead to win-win future. Uh, that's all, thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Alam. The next up, we have a pre-recorded presentation from me. I'm a development economist by training and an interdisciplinary agricultural development analyst. I work at Lincoln University, New Zealand. I have dedicated much of my recent time to research the institution's food security gender nexus in South Asia and supervise projects in Vietnam Nigeria, Ghana, and Malawi. My presentation today, which is co-authored with Lincoln's research assistant, Amakanazi, would focus on the impact of loop aggregation schemes on farmers' output, income, consumption, and dietary diversity. I am presenting the results of the economic analysis of quantitative data collected as part of the mini project in Bangladesh. The question we ask in this paper is, does market inclusion help farmers to eat better? If we look into the agricultural economics literature, we would see that 
a lot of work has been done in terms of looking into what are the economic benefits by joining the aggregation services. So as you see in pathway one, we are interpreting that aggregation services definitely helps the farmers to reduce the transaction cost and get a better price. So through aggregation services, farmers get higher income. This generates from the institutional economics literature. If you look into the novelty of our research, what we wanted to capture is more than the economic impact. As you look in the title, we are interested in the nutritional outcome for the farmers. So our argument is, although Loop is helping the farmers to get better economic outcomes, their economic benefits can be contrasted with the possibility of reduced availability of high quality produce in the local markets and local lower consumption at the household level. Hence, in this paper, we evaluate the impact of loop intervention on three economic outcomes, which are captured in pathway one. And we, the indicators we use are farmers output, revenue, and net income from vegetables. And we also look into three nutritional outcomes. The two nutritional outcomes that come to our mind first is definitely food and nutrition security, which we capture by food insecurity index and also dietary diversity. This is reflected in pathway two, which means that if you have higher income, you will have better purchasing power to uh, buy nutritious food. And the third one is shown in pathway three, which we can see that because of the loop, if the farmers are producing more vegetables, there is a probability that they are going to consume more fruits and vegetables at home. Now let us look into the sample distribution. We collected data from Karif 1 2018 to Ravi 2019. In the first step, two bazaars were purposefully selected on the basis of the number and amount of transaction based on loop dashboard, which we collected from digital green. In the second stage, two loop villages were randomly selected from each bazaar. And in the third stage, 30 loop farming households were randomly selected from a database of loop farmers who had maintained vegetable transaction for the last 12 months. Then we selected 30 non loop farm households randomly from the same loop villages. So in total, we have 240 data points across the households. When we first started our analysis, we looked into the difference between the loop and non loop farmers. In terms of the social and demographic variables, the only statistical significant variable was age. As you can see, farmers are young, non loop. But for all variables related to production of vegetables and economic outcomes, we see the difference between so statistically significant. So if you look into the uh, few results that I have presented here, you can see that loop farmers cultivate 12 kata or 1,518 square meter more land for fruits and vegetables. They produce 2,774 kg more and earn around 23,000 taka or 271 US dollar more in the reference year. So the question where what comes to our mind, how much of this difference is due to loop? To address the problem, we opted for a matching method, which compares the participants and non-participants that have similar observable attributes. In this case, in the matching procedure, loop farmers are matched with non-loop farmers with similar characteristics to make sure that the dissimilar farmers or outliers will have little or no influence. Um, so when we run the different matching process, we see that 231 farmers were matched. So out of 240 farmers in total. PSM is commonly used method in which the predicted probability score of being in the treated group is estimated by a logic model or profit model. In our case, we opted for logic model and if you look at this table, you will see that the results indicate loop farmers have 
marked differences, with marked differences and statistically significant differences in terms of net income and sales revenue among the economic outcomes. So if we look into the food and nutrition outcomes, which is the main interest for our study, we see that food farmers have higher dietary diversity. And in terms of the two indicators for food insecurity, we asked the question that whether the farmers uh, have access to limited foods in the last one week or so. We clearly see that the loop farmers have less probability to have that limited exposure to food. And when the question was asked about no food at all, we have the similar results. But what is interesting here is when we think about our conceptual model, we talk about the consumption of vegetables at home is statistically significant between loop farmers and non loop farmers. We did another estimation uh, to have to check the robustness of our results, and we got similar results, except that in this case, the production variables is also statistically significant, which implies that the farmers who are on the loop aggregation scheme, they are having 2,120 kg more on average compared to non loop participants. This amounts to the 24% increase in the aggregate production. Likewise, when we look into net income, the increase is 52%. And when we look into the sales revenue, the increase is 37%. Regarding the food and nutrition security, the results are similar. If we interpret the number, we can see that loop households have significantly higher dietary diversity than non-loop households on average. Specifically, this implies that participating in loop increased the number of food groups consumed in the household compared to non-loop participants. This amounts to an 11% increase in dietary diversity on average. And when we look into the two food insecurity indicators, Again, we see that 77% um, there is 77% less chance for loop farmers to, to be exposed to a situation where they have no food. Again, the home consumption variable is not statistically significant. So uh, this is an interesting result. So we can clearly see that in terms of our conceptual framework, but with Two is definitely statistically significant. So uh, we can say that aggregation scheme has enabled farmers to have higher food and nutrition security. Although the low farmers do not have higher consumption at home, they have lower food insecurity and higher dietary diversity. And again, like many of the other studies that has been done before, we also see aggregation scheme has been economically beneficial for participating farmers. They not only have higher vegetable production, but they earn higher revenue and net income from selling those vegetables. I'd like to conclude the presentation by focusing on the photo that I have attached. I have three female farmers who have participated in the, and I think the future work needs to look into how an aggregation service like Loop, which is low carbon and um, time saving for female farmers, which is of crucial importance to them can help them empower. My hypothesis would be that low carbon market participation through Loop enhances their instrumental agency. That means they can make more decisions in terms of uh, selection of inputs. They can decide in terms of how the income is being used. And that may result into better nutrition outcomes for children. Thank you very much. Before we move into the next uh, presentation, I would like to remind everyone that so far you must have some questions. You can put those questions in the Q&A. And after the uh, presentations, uh, we are going to have a dedicated section for discussing and you can ask questions then as well. Next up for presentation, uh, we have a pre-recorded presentation by Dr. Ismat Arabegum. Dr. Ismat has been 
in the BA uh, Bangladesh Agriculture University mini project since March 2020. Dr. Isman's presentation will focus on the vegetable safety along the value chain and the implications of results. Dr. Ismat is a professor at the Department of Agricultural Economics, Bangladesh Agriculture University, Mamenshing. Dr. Ismat has spent periods of time as visiting fellow in Belgium, Australia, and also has been a mixed fellow at Hokkaido University, Japan, where she obtained her master's and PhD in agricultural development economics. Her research interests include livestock economics and management, value chain analysis, post-harvest loss reduction, gender and development, and safe food. Dr. Ismuth. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. My topic is set to knowledge and good practices of vegetables and genetics. Evidence from Joshua Bangladesh. Food safety is an important global public health issue to ensure sound health refers to addressing all those hazards, whether chronic or acute, that may be food injurious to the health of consumers. If the principle of food safety are observed throughout the supply chain of vegetable production, most foodborne areas can be prevented. We have to ensure food safety from farm to factory to farm in order to prevent foodborne diseases and diseases. Food safety is important because it ensures that the food producer handle is safe for consumption. If food safety is not maintained in producer and or intermediaries level, consumers could become seriously ill with food poisoning and foodborne diseases. Formulation of an effective food policy to improve food security is a matter of utmost importance for Bangladesh. Access to safe and nutritious food is essential for improvement of nutrition status. Keeping that in mind, the Bangladesh Net Food, food Policy has emphasized on food safety by ensuring availability of safe and nutritious food, ensuring access to safe food, and ensuring utilization and nutrition. National agriculture policy plan of action also emphasized on food safety. Not only that, Sustainable Development Goal 2 aims to end global hunger and malnutrition by 2030 for food. Ensuring food safety is a must. However, uh, about 60% of total Bangladeshi people suffer from foodborne diseases. In 1960, Bangladesh used only 758 metric tons of pesticide, but pesticide application has increased from 750 to 3,028 metric tons in 1980 and 7,258 metric tons in 2017. The World Bank research revealed that the overuse of pesticides in widespread among vegetable farmers in Bangladesh. Some highly hazardous pesticides like diazinon, carbofuran, and a few banned dead pesticides like endrin or DDT have also been found to be frequently used by Bangladeshi farmers. There are few research in experimental, but scanty of research are found on cap along the value chain. Therefore, we focused on to assess the pesticide safety use behavior, that is, knowledge attitude practices of loop and non loop vegetable farmers, to find out the relationship between cap and socioeconomic characteristics to assess the safety behavior of market actors along the value chain. Here is our conceptual framework. We try to find out the status of loop and non loop farmers. We use face to face household survey data. Our sample size is 3060, where loop farmers 120, non loop in loop villages, non loop in 
non-loop indices, also 120 samples. 11 questions were asked to farmers on this is safety related app. Principal component analysis was applied to determine the latent variable of F. Path diagram and structural equation modeling has been also used here. Not only face to face housing survey, we also conducted focus group discussion with very team participants. This table indicates defense of CAP towards pesticide safety, where we found the knowledge of liquid and pesticide score of non loop and loop farmers. Our man who test confirmed that knowledge and practices of loop farmers on pesticide safety, safety are significantly higher than non loop farmers. And the path diagram and same results of knowledge towards pesticide safety. Path diagram followed by structural equation modeling was performed to examine the causal relationship between socioeconomic factors, including farmers' participation in loop, loop as the path diagram of attitude towards pesticide safety. From some results, we found that Attitude regarding pesticide use was strongly associated with loop participation. That is positive. And the path diagram and some results of practice towards pesticide safety. We found that the farmer's practice regarding pesticide use was strongly associated with loop participation. Also, some other socioeconomic factors, such as training. Farmers' experience have strongly associated with practice towards pesticide safety. There are some outcomes from focus group discussion. We found that many actors received training on safe transportation as well as safe loading and unloading of vegetables. Some of them learned from experiences and following their peers. They also know how to clean vegetables, store, wash hands with soap, use gloves, wear clean dresses. We also found that grade, they grade vegetables into three grades, grade A, grade B, and grade C. From focus group discussion, we found that price would vary by type of vegetables, but on an average, it would vary by 20 to 40 taka per month. Cost would increase by 20 to 30 taka per month for maintaining safety measures like wearing gloves, using soap, hand wash, clean water, clean dresses, etc. Proper handling practices would decrease wastes, proper practice would increase the income of actors if the marketing system would respond to safer vegetables. In conclusion, we can say that loop farmers have better safety related care than non loop farmers. Farmers' knowledge and equal practices has causal relationship with socioeconomic variables. Actors should be more responsive. To practice safety measures in Haruchin if they receive adequate premium. So, what is the next? Our next step to prepare more qualitative narrative and identify quantitatively how loop aggregation scheme incentivized loop farmers to adapt safety practices using full data set. Thank you very much for your questions, Harry. Thank you, Dr. Ismond, for your excellent presentation. Would like to in now invite Dr. Sunita Kadiala to give us her views on the key policy messages arising from MINI, as well as potential research directions to further uncover insights for nutritional sensitive food systems. Dr. Sunita Kadiala is a professor of global nutrition at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Alongside her work as a co-investigator on MINI, Sunita is also the principal investigator of upscaling participatory action and videos for agriculture and nutrition Upaban project in India. Her research focuses on the intersection between food systems and food security, health and nutrition. Dr. Kadiala. Thank you um, for um, having this wonderful workshop and all the uh, key messages that you have uh, shared with our audience here today. Um, I'm just going to recap and set the stage for what our future perhaps should look like in terms of uh, based on what we have learned so far and our previous presenters have communicated to you. 
what we what we see in a nutshell is that the big market pulled um you know uh, to uh, to big cities and other urban areas can be strong uh, although we see somewhat of a weaker pull in bangladesh than we do see in india in fact in our mini work and uh, the uh, and therefore aggregation services and interventions to reduce transportation costs um, do not completely mitigate this pull uh, although can help in the context of bangladesh as the results have shown so what is important then to to have fruits and vegetables serve the nutritionally vulnerable and in areas where uh, fruits and vegetables continue to be um, continue to be unaffordable and and also face a lot of seasonal challenges is to have a combination of synergistic interventions that can sorry about the typo there that can maximize consumer facing benefits whilst avoiding farmer facing trade offs traditional in agriculture what we tend to think is about about the services or any kind of interventions benefiting the farmers and as you have seen and as uh, earlier yes i mean loop has several benefits um, that it offers to the farmers and farming households that participate in the interventions what 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 but what we are also interested in loop is trying to understand how aggregation services can serve populations at large whether they are farmers or not farmers or whether they are participating in loop or not participating the, in in loop so in order to benefit populations at large with the affordable and safe uh, fruits and vegetables is to create demand so we need the interventions that actually improve demand and um and with along with deliberate operationalization of in incentives to route foods to vulnerable markets it's not going to happen as a serendipity is what we have learned both in india and bangladesh and there has to be a deliberate attempt and and things that that need to be done with aggregation services to incentivize them to provide um fruits and vegetables to these markets and along with digitized aggregation services and so the idea is to combine intervention mentions to smooth and predicted shortages in vulnerable vulnerable markets so and as we have seen um food safety remains paramount of paramount importance and market based interventions can improve food safety but moving forward we really do need to think about is to scale up these interventions in terms of credit capital and capacity not just of farmers but also of various stakeholders along these value chains and while doing that we still need to understand and well we do understand but to need to overcome um, uh, pro um productivity traps so what are some of the policy Im implications so i think we need to continue to um uh, continue our quest in terms of uh, aggregation services such as loop embrace them embrace these kind of market based interventions but as we have learned in the last 10 years whether it's the economic growth or whether it's homestead fruit production um you, we need to make them deliberately nutrition sensitive that means we need to deliberately incorporate nutrition objectives and operationalize them in these uh in these various interventions that that is when we will be able to see um will be able to see impacts on affordability and safety of fruits and vegetables uh reaching uh, the vulnerable policy investments in infrastructure financial and human capital remain quite important uh, uh, as we have seen we can uh, aggregation services have an important role in reducing food loss seasonal fluctuations and price volatility and with coherent interventions to increase the uptake of these uh, market based solutions uh, by the right stakeholders at the right right time is important it's not just the farmer who is a stakeholder there is the post farm gate stakeholders as well as policy makers as well as people who are creating these digital solutions so we need coherent interventions that bring all these people together in a synergistic and complementary way so 
digitization of, for example, digitization of markets uh, should be coupled with improving trust of farmers in these services, the use of information being provided, training on how to use these resources. So we can't just put something out there. And I think the world has lots of solutions that really the where the rubber meets the road is really in the uptake of these services and scaling of these services. And we need to understand these better. And we need to continue to monitor and evaluate these effects uh, of these ongoing uh, uh, projects or, or policy initiatives and, and, and really understand who is benefiting and who is not benefiting. Here, the idea of equity for many has been uh, central. Um, for example, uh, for example, who is getting these fruits and vegetables at what cost and what safety remain important and equity um, is, of course, an important goal for most policymakers as well. So finally, the investment in demand creation of the nutritionally vulnerable is also important. Remember that um, you know, markets don't just provide good foods. They also provide a lot of unhealthy ultra processed foods. So, so you might have tomatoes, uh, really fresh and, 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 and uh, mouth watering, but you also have equally fresh and mouth watering um, uh, chips and so on and so forth. So the consumer is always making these decisions in a marketplace and therefore, um, uh, improving the demand for healthy foods and reducing the demand for unhealthy foods uh, remains important. So consumer centric um, uh, interventions to improve the demand for uptake also remains important. So what could the future agenda look like? So what we have learned is that the first generation of nutrition sensitive agricultural interventions, such as how can we improve agriculture production diversity of farmers by of women in their home in their homesteads, we know that these have improved uh, agriculture production diversity, many times value of agriculture production. Um, studies have shown that they can, if they are gender sensitive, improve, uh, improve empowerment metrics of women. And definitely uh, we have seen that these interventions can improve dietary diversity, which is an indicator of diet quality of mothers and children. Now, these studies also show that markets are an important mediator or an effect modifier in terms of improving diets further. So we need to uh, we need to tackle um, uh, the market markets and make them central to our policy and program agendas. So making downstream market interventions nutrition sensitive is nascent and there are just a handful of experiments or studies uh, um, towards this effect and research and policy investments can potentially have uh, scalable nutritional impacts. So some areas, finally, in my presentation, here are some suggestions. Uh, to further invest could be about combinations, complementarities, and coherence at policy and programmatic level. You want all, because nutrition is a multi-sectoral, uh, multi-ministerial uh, agenda, we need to ensure that the policies made in one area do not act inadvertently, um, inadvertently mitigate or, or oppose the policies in, in other sectors as well. So we really need to think through map and, and, and leverage combinations, complementarities and coherences, coherence across all levels uh, for win-win solutions. As I said, equity is important, but not just of urban and rural areas, but also various religions, ethnicities, demographic groups, so on and so forth. Now, of course, there is no way we can actually do all this without really thinking through uh, the environment and what that means uh, uh, in terms of uh, climate change and living within uh, planetary uh, boundaries. So we, ha we have to put environmental vulnerab vulnerabilities front and central. And uh, we do have to think about minimizing uh, consumption of healthy foods and improving the consumption of um, minimizing the consumption of unhealthy foods and maximizing or optimizing the consumption of uh, healthy foods. We have, you know, obviously policies from uh, from coming from the top and 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 the companies and and so on and so forth remain important. But we'll very soon 
uh, come to the barrier of uptake by the citizens and populations. So we need to invest more in participatory, citizen-driven and contextually appropriate, but scalable solutions for the consumers and, and, um, and various actors along the value chain. That's it from me. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, uh, Professor Cardella, for your thoughtful discussion on policy implications and uh, articulating the future agenda. Uh, so I would now like to welcome Professor Bhavani Shankar, Professor Mohammad Jahangir Alam, Professor Ismo Tara Begum, and Professor Sunita Cardella to respond to some of the questions that have been posed by the attendees. We have around 18 minutes, but before they begin, let's just take the quick poll to see how important you think it is for us to work to, towards getting more attention to the subject of nutritionally sensitive food system and interventions. We can now share the result that 68% of our attendees uh, thinks that the many project findings align very strongly with the nutrition sensitive agri-food policies in their countries. And then we have um, 24 person who are neutral and most interestingly, eight person who said that the policies are not aligned. So um, let's open the floor for discussion. I'm sure that those who, who have responded as not aligned would have some specific question. Um, I'm going to ask the, the presenters to put their video on so we can see the answers and I'm going to pick up some of the question that has been raised here. So um, one of the question that is addressed to me from Vinay, uh, Vinay, uh, Vinay is asking that why the age parameters has kept to differentiate the loop and non-loop farmers, is there any specific reason behind it? Uh, so Vinay, we did take the average age of the loop farmers and average age of the non-loop farmers and then we did a t-test to see if they're statistically different and that was the result we have taken um, as part of your our study which the result i couldn't share when we did uh, look at the probability of farmers joining the loop program, age is a very sig statistically significant variable again. And um, I think it is to some extent, as we are still doing more uh, analysis of our data, to some extent it is due to the um, used to that younger farmers are more used to mobile phone, are more used to app. So I think that could be the reason that we see the age difference between loop and non-loop farmers. Now I will go to the next question, which is from Ashikur Rahman. We are concerned about the nutrition security. I think the food habit of Bangladesh people hinders the path of nutrition security. Most of us don't know about balanced diet. We don't know or care about nutrition intake. Um, I would ask Bhabani or Sunita to answer this question from Mohammad Ashikur Rahman. Isn't it? So the question is, what can we do for changing the food habit of the people? Isn't it necessary to take proper diet daily to ensure nutrition security? How can we make people aware about the nutrition intake? I can take that. Um, yeah, sure. Um, Thank you for that question. Yes, that is um, that is a really challenging. Uh, that is a challenge we have, right? But also there is a lot of research on how to do that. And in the last, um, I don't know how many decades, uh, the nutrition community has invested quite a lot in understanding what kind of uh, around basically behavior change, how to uh, how to generate behavior change, 
and and um, and many of these nutrition sensitive food systems or agriculture interventions basically have a very strong component the ones that manage to change uh, show an impact on diet quality have a very strong objective as i said of of uh, improving dietary outcomes so really thinking through what is the pathway between a policy or a program and why do we think that that would actually map out how it is meant to improve nutrition outcomes and make sure that we all the resources and disciplines and expertise is in place we find that um, participatory interventions, as I mentioned, uh, where, um, where there is more collective action and collective identification of the problem and the solutions uh, within communities do have a substantial uh, impact on, uh, on dietary outcomes of mothers and children. Where the research is going is also the next generation of research, if you're really thinking of doing anything about this, is um, many of them have been around uh, targeting women and mothers especially and, uh, and moving away from uh, I'll educate you because your knowledge is poor versus uh, here is uh, trying to understand the motivations, opportunities and barriers the mother faces which quickly brings you to her mother-in-law, her husband and the community. So how do we have more family centric and community level empowering interventions is where uh, it is a nutrition and nutrition sensitive <clears throat> development community is moving to. Hopefully that's helpful for you, yeah. Thank you, Sunita. Um, it's really, really interesting how you, add, uh, I mean, your suggestions are so we have uh, two questions which are directed to uh, Professor Alum. Professor Alum, um, I would ask you to respond to the questions. Yeah, thank you so much. I think the, the, the questions that made by Amaka and then Sharub Boru are there very similar. So just I'm responding just together. Uh, so you are right, absolutely. What Amaka you are asking and then uh, what sort of you are asking that there are many examples of failures across the world of this sort of aggregation but also there are many examples of the success cases across the world that the tricky thing is that in most of the cases that when there is an aggregation system they focus mostly on the the farmers economic return and so far without seeing other outcomes, for example, like equity related issues, uh, and then saying, and then bypassing the, the neglected and then the small market consumers uh, interest and so on. Uh, so yes, and also in many of the cases like uh, the irrigation system, but they should be like programized, uh, keeping the mind in the local context in the way that the program should be customized uh, so that uh, 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 their kind of like the improvements can be happened. So in this project, actually, what you are looked at uh, looking at the equitable issue is not that uh, only aggregating uh, vegetables through far aggregators, aggregating farmers, just they, they, they are getting benefit, but also you try to look at that, what are the other options that could be taken over by the government or the policy makers to benefit the, the neglected and the small uh, uh, consumers in the smaller neglected markers that ultimately could benefit uh, the, uh, the sustainable development goals, for example, like the goal number two, that bringing nutrition for all people. Uh, so I agree, yes, exactly. But we tried and only, we gave some of the uh, scenarios that actually gave the, the, the scenario or the policy that could bring the benefits for all the people. That's what we said, the equity in this project. So Amaka and then Shorub, thank you so much for asking this very fantastic and valuable question. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Alum. Because of the time limitations that we have, I would just ask Professor Ismont to answer one question and then we will move to the uh, panel session. I can assure everyone uh, we are going to answer you before the end of the session. And if we do not have time, we'll send you a reply after the presentation. Uh, uh, Dr. Professor Ismont, can you please respond yeah. to the question by Rokubu Yeah, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Ratna. Uh, yeah, I have got two questions. One is uh, what I think about farmers' knowledge of food safety can act as a health surveyor for the consumer and as well as farmers themselves. 
It is a very excellent and relevant question. Um, yes, uh, you are right. To answer this question, first of all, we have to remember that uh, the vegetable producers in Bangladesh uh, vary in size and their production capacity and also ensuring farmers have access to knowledge on how to handle vegetables, safety, how to use appropriate timing for pesticide application and, uh, and the equipment. So uh, in addition, maintaining those standards regardless of where food is he uh, heading to and um, to the, that means in the domestic market as well as for the international market export is another issue to concern. In order to work uh, for providing uh, or improving uh, farmers' knowledge level on procedure could be taking into account farmers say, in standard regulatory approaches. This will help in capacity building and allow them to achieve compliance. Otherwise, farmers may simply sell food that does not comply with standard in uh, informal markets where those standards are not enforced, putting vulnerable population at, at greater risk of consuming unsafe food. So we have to take care about this. And another question was how government can play effective role in providing institutional support to the vegetable producer in the country to improve their knowledge and food safety practices. This is also a very relevant question and excellent question. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Tabassum. Uh, yeah, a number of ways is possible, for instance, uh, one is uh, to identify a lead vegetable farmer for reason. We can identify to facilitate planning taken by the multi-stakeholder team to the top to bottom, that is government to uh, uh, the uh, low level to and uh, um, bottom level to follow up uh, on the implementation of activities and progress monitoring mechanism. Another we can uh, to establish a networking me mechanism that will enhance the interaction across the country using tools such as uh, e-newsletter based uh, communication uh, strategy and uh, improved uh, web-based availability of information. Establishing establishing gap could be another approach. So DE can do that. Thank you very much for your nice question. And if I not answer any other question, I will send it in chat box. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ismond. Uh, we now have a panel session, understanding their views regarding the findings of Mini Bangladesh Time. Uh, we have Dr. Samshul Alumsar, Senior Secretary and Member of Bangladesh Planning Commission as the panel chair, Mr. Mohamed Yusuf, Director General, Department of Agricultural Marketing, and Dr. Ruhul Amin Talukdar, Additional Secretary, Policy Planning and Coordination Wing, Minister of Agriculture, and Dr. Sheikh Mohammed Bukhtiar, Executive Chairman, Bangladesh Agricultural Research Council as panel member. Now I would like to request Professor Alam to take over the panel session. Over to you, Professor Alam. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, mm. uh, Dr. Nazmun Naharatnapa, for a very fantastic uh, like one-hour session that you conducted. Uh, so now, just I, on behalf of the mini team, would like to express our deepest gratitude to the to the panel speakers today. We have four. We have four distinguished panel speakers that Dr. Naharatnapa already said, uh, Dr. Shamshul Alam sir, member. Uh, uh, in the General Economics Division of Planning Commission and Senior Secretary, Minister Planning. Uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Mohammad Yusuf, Director General, uh, Department of Agricultural Marketing, Minister of Agriculture. Dr. Ruhul Amin Talukdar, Additional Secretary, Policy Planning and Coordination, Wing Minister of Agriculture, and Dr. Sheikh Mohammad Bakhtiar, Executive Chairman, Bangladesh Agricultural Research Council. Uh, in the middle of all of the challenges, uh, that currently Bangladesh is facing due to COVID and now cyclone years, we the mini team are very fortunate to be able to share our research result with you and to have you with the, all uh, in this panel uh, uh, session. So welcome all of you. So a little bit of changing the, the direction of the program, just, uh, yeah, I'm going to the, the panel chair first. Uh, uh, because he, uh, uh, he has some other uh, job uh, to be done. Uh, so uh, the panel chair, Dr. Shamsul Alam is serving as the senior secretary of the General Economics Division of the Bangladesh Planning Commission. Uh, Dr. Alam served as a professor in agribusiness and agri uh, marketing for more than 35 years 
before he joined to planning commission in 2009. Dr. Alam led the preparation of national planning documents during 2009 to 21, uh, period six five-year plan, revised accelerated poverty reduction strategy paper, two entitled steps towards change, prospective plan of Bangladesh 2010 to 2021, making vision 2021 a reality, national sustainable development strategy and first and second implementation review of the uh, six five-year plan. He led the preparation of Bangladesh National Social Security Strategy 2015 20 to 2025 and the seventh five year plan, Bangladesh Delta Plan uh, 2100, and Bangladesh Second Perspective Plan 2021 and 41, to name a few. And he's uh, a recipient of Ekushe product on economics in 2020. Uh, Economist of Influence Award 2018 by Sanem, Gold Medal Award by Bangladesh Agricultural Economist Association, Rebel Poet, uh, Kaji Nozul Islam uh, Memorial Model, uh, Medal, uh, Shikha Porjabekhan Society, and so many awards that he received. So you are welcome, Professor Dr. Shamsul Alam, sir. So my two questions are putting to you together so that uh, you can just uh, respond to, to, to the audience. Uh, that uh, we shared our research findings, market intervention for nutritional improvement and share use the results. So my first question to you that which of the findings make sense to you and which ones do not make sense given that you have long standing working experience in the agricultural food sector. So this one is the first question. And the second question to you is that uh, would you please say that what are the biggest barriers uh, for nutrition sensitive agri food system in the country? And then, as you are the one of the key person for reviewing and then progress monitoring of the sustainable development goals and the key policy planners in the country, and then why you are in the planning commission for more than a decade, uh, that uh, how policymakers addressing the barriers to achieve several. UN sustainable de development goals, including goal number two, that actually focus the nutrition issue. So it's two questions for you. Uh, so back to you, uh, Dr. Shamsul Alam, sir, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome all, all the distinguished participants, researchers, and the organizers. Uh, it's very two pertinent questions uh, uh, regarding the uh, workshop or seminar, whatever you call. Uh, on my part, actually, to answer the first part would be difficult. I actually joined you just around four. Before that, uh, I was on another uh, meeting. Uh, so I could not hear all the presentations. So it would be unfair to judge uh, which study was very relevant to that topic. And uh, whatever I heard from the last one Indian presentation, I enjoyed quite. Uh, and she spoke very nicely on how, uh, what future uh, agenda should be in this regard about the market interventions towards uh, uh, sensitive food nutrition, something like that. So for the first part, I beg apology that I cannot really give you judgment, uh, which uh, are very relevant to the topic and which are not that much relevant. I think more or less all are relevant. How one addresses uh, the depends uh, on the researcher, but uh, in general, why, uh, why I would say uh, all the studies as I heard followed methodological uh, procedures, maybe same, uh, same, I mean, in a sense, uh, maybe they followed same template or uh, same uh, stages or processes other than the respondents or the farmers, uh, uh, the, as such the method, they have followed the uh, standard uh, methodology because you work in a team. So I just skip answering directly anything on the uh, first part of your question. Uh, but what I felt studies uh, were based on empirical findings and uh, one uh, presentation I heard partly. So that is the reason I already explained, I cannot answer uh, your first part. 
The second part is very relevant for the end use of all these uh, researches. You know, what is purpose of any research? The purpose is with the outcome or output is generated through research that need to be useful to the society, to the betterment of social welfare. At the end of the day, that really counts uh, whether your research is uh, useful or not. How much uh, is useful your research to change the society or change the policy prescription to the society depends on research outcomes. If that is useful to make policy prescriptions or is useful to change any mode of production to, or to change any behavioral pattern or practice by your research finding, then the research would be useful, I should say. The policy question actually is very much uh, uh, highly important uh, in the context of SDGs. Uh, in SDG 2, you all know where uh, in SDG 2 we saw that uh, they, they, they expected to end hunger and achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. In these few words in a sentence actually uh, ex express everything, I think, the need of uh, good practices in agriculture, ending hunger, achieving food security, improved nutrition, promoting sustainable agriculture. So, uh, and in uh, goal one, you all know, uh, the, the goal one actually prevalence of assessment of progress is by two, uh, by, by indicators. The first indicator uh, is uh, prevalence of undernourishment. Uh, in any country. So undernourishment in Bangladesh, we had the figure for 2018, uh, which is 14.7% of people suffer from undernourishment, you see. And then the other indicator to measure hunger and to assess the impact of hunger is uh, what we found in SDG. Uh, is the stunting, you know, uh, number of stunting, wasting, and underweight uh, uh, suffered by the people. So that will indicate whether there's hunger in the society or not. All these are symptoms or outcome of hunger, uh, stunting, uh, wasting, and underweight. So stunting, we had 28% of children actually suffered from hunger in 2019. Almost one third of children. It should be a big concern for all of us, particularly for policymakers. Wasting, you know, 9.8% of children suffered from wasting. Underweight, 23%. So all these figures still, uh, even if we are progressing much, uh, the society, you know, economic transformation is rapidly going on. Uh, we have uh, increasing per capita uh, income each year, but we are not free of uh, all these, you know, all these uh, symptoms of hunger, as I told. So as a policy prescription, I would say uh, what government can do and what we did in the past. Uh, actually government, directly cannot you know, uh, do anything other than uh, through using market mechanism. Because in a free enterprise economy, it's not a common economy, it's a free enterprise economy where individual, pro pro uh, individual agents actually work for production, individual agents work for trade, individual agents uh, are responsible for distribution. So in a free market economy, government can pursue, government uh, can promote issues, ideas, but individual actors or agents should work. And uh, government need to see whether markets actually work efficiently, market, whether there is any imperfection in market, meaning whether market is debated from any uh, competitive market, no. 
if there is any government should intervene and regulate uh, the behavior of the uh, those who are out of track or do not follow the market uh, norms or behavior of uh, pure competition as such uh, government by policy is encouraging you know uh, expansion of agricultural diversification through market mechanism and that has been working well because you see we have good diversification agriculture through uh, increased production of vegetables fruits in our country uh, farmers are choosing high value crops because of higher prices in the market so government policy has been successful in this regard uh, emphasizing crop diversification particularly emphasizing more for uh, high value crops and high value crops those are really more relevant to uh, health issues, nutritional issues, particularly fruits, vegetables. So government can intervene in a way by training the farmers, producing farmers through extension agents. Government can you know, uh, provide uh, technology, te technical and technical support to farmers, can provide you know, new practices of agriculture to farmers through extension agents. So by that government has been uh, serving the uh, producers, farmers, and emphasizing more uh, of uh, no, uh, agricultural, more increased production, more uh, efficient distribution uh, within the country and outside country for exports. So I don't know, as a national policy planner, I see things macroeconomically. Uh, I'm not that much nowadays, very competent and efficient to see uh, micro changes, micro impacts. That is the uh, part of researchers who can you know, directly you know, uh, say how markets are working, whether there is deviation, uh, whether government role is really appropriate or not, or what government should do more. This is the part of researchers. So I thank you very much for allowing me to speak to you. So uh, I wish to stop here because uh, maybe uh, I answered in a broad spectrum way, but other than uh, I, I really, I can help myself to answer a specific question like uh, which research is good or how far it is relevant to your purpose. Thank you very much. If anything, any other question, I can uh, answer very shortly, if you like. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Shamsul Alam, sir. Yeah, your talks was really very interesting and informative. And then we also we understand that as because you are not listening our presentation as uh, you had uh, other very emergency work. Uh, but uh, we'll be sharing our presentations uh, with you and then we'll have very, very glad to the recipient comments that uh, the results that which ones it makes sense and which ones is not good. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, a reminder to the audience, uh, all the panelists are with us on this webinar. So please share your questions in the Q&A box and they'll be very happy to respond. Oh, I think uh, Alam has frozen. Nazmanapa, did you want to to just yep. take over here yeah. or um? I can I can go ahead. Um, I think the next presentation, yes, Alam Bhai has uh, frozen. So our next panelist is. Our next panelist is Dr. Sheikh Mohammed Bokhtir. Dr. Bokhtir, can you please share your views? Which of the findings make sense to you and which ones do not make sense given that you have this uh, long-standing work experience in the agri-food system? Dr. Sheikh Mohammed Bokhtir joined Bangladesh Agricultural Research Council in 2019 as executive chairman. Earlier, Dr. Bokhtir served as the member director 
planning and evaluation in the same organization. He also served as the director, Sark Agricultural Center. During his service at BRC, he also served as the director, support service and director of technology transfer and monitoring in the same organization. Now over to you, Dr. Bhaktir. Uh, thank you, uh, Ratna Nazmoon. I'm also happy to show the Sunetha Kadiyal. I met him at Ghana 2018. And their colleague, my respected uh, Professor Sulalom, other colleague from Bangladesh. <clears throat> Actually, uh, Dr. Alam, he mentioned everything very nicely because he, uh, he developed a lot of policy, especially the uh, recent eight five-year plan of Bangladesh. Actually, our National Agriculture Policy 2018 and our National Agriculture Extension Policy 2020 and recently, the government of Bangladesh they adapted the Bangladesh Good Agriculture Practices Gap Policy 2020. And also, government recently published the eight five year plan. All these policy and plan, the main objective, especially in the domain of agriculture, to ensure sustainable, uh, safe, and profitable agriculture. This is the main objective of all the policies. Even in Bangladesh also adopted the Food Safety Act 2013. So we are giving more emphasis to ensure the safe and nutritious food. And accordingly, we also reoriented our a recent, recent research program. You are not looking only to increase the yield, rather you also giving more emphasis to develop some nutrient in this variety by which we can minimize, we can supply the nutrient for the all. And indeed safe and nutritious food production will definitely promote commercialization of our agriculture. Though our export market is not wide, it is because of lack of certification facilities. As our recent, we had a significant progress in last three decades in agriculture. And right now our per capita income almost 2,227. And people now prefer to consume more safe and nutritious food with the increase of their purchase capability. So we need to focus on doing everything possible to ensure safe and nutritious food. Along with development of certification facilities and also for increasing export potential of our fruits and vegetables. And if you look the pesticide application in 1988, it was almost 3,028 metric ton in 1980. In 2017, it has almost increased 10 times more, that is 37,258 metric ton. We are using the pesticide in to ensure our productivity. But we should accept the reality that we cannot minimize our productivity because, you know, Bangladesh is very densely populated countries, so we cannot sacrifice our yield. But we are trying to minimize or we are trying to create the awareness, the farmers and the policy maker, so that we can minimize the pesticide application through IPM, ICM, and organic farming to ensure our safe food. Also, we are ensuring the judicious use of pesticides. So thank you, Ratna. Do you have any uh, other questions? Yes, uh, Dr. Bakhtiar. 
I think uh, Alumpai is back, so I will let Alumpai ask you the question. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Afnapa, for taking uh, over that uh, for electricity shows here. So I will just uh, disconnect for, for a couple of seconds. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed Bakhtiar, Executive Director of Bangladesh Agriculture Research Council. You have long standing experience on the issue. So it was very highly uh, informative uh, talks uh, uh, for the audience. Uh, so now I move to the, uh, our second pan uh, third panel. Uh, Dr. Ruhul Amin Talukdar. Uh, so you are welcome. Dr. Ruhul Amin Talukdar. Uh, sorry for the comment. Alumbhai, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, sorry. Yeah, do, Dr. Ruhul Amin Talukdar is an additional secretary that I told uh, the, the policy planning and coordination wing. And uh, Dr. Talukdar served as research director at uh, food planning and monitoring unit, Minister of Food and uh, Joint Secretary at the Ministry of Agriculture prior to his current position. Uh, so my questions to Dr. Ruhul Amin Talukdar that uh, in our project, we analyze several uh, scenarios to have the, the agricultural food system more, more new, uh, equitable and nutritive uh, for the all uh, segments of the populations. Uh, so we analyze several scenarios, uh, upscaling the aggregation uh, and then establishing cold storage uh, at the farm uh, gate level. Uh, we analyze the, the uh, uh, transport uh, 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 subsidy quota, and then also aggregated uh, uh, combined some other uh, scenarios together. So as you have long standing uh, experience in uh, Minister of Food and Minister of uh, Agriculture, and now ca currently you are leading uh, policy planning and coordination wing at the Minister of Agriculture, you have so many responsibilities. So my question to you, are there other scenarios that you think are important to analyze for more equitable agri-food system, which might balance interest of both producers uh, as well as consumers? So over to you, Dr. Ruhul Amin Uh Thank you, Dr. Alam. And uh, good afternoon to all of you, uh, respected, uh, chair of the of this session, uh, we had the five presenters before uh, before we joined the session, and uh, the other distinguished panelists, the experts who are attending the dissemination workshop, and the learned audience. <clears throat> In fact. Uh, we have with us the respected senior uh, member of the planning commission. He has outlined the macro scenario of the policies and the indicators that are associated with, uh, with uh, nutritional security of the people of the country. Uh, if I could step right from the beginning, that would have been better for me. Uh, I would have been in a better position to talk about uh, the question you asked for, but let me try. Uh, I I saw in my email it's, there are five presentations. One was on uh, market intervention for nutritional improvement. Uh, that was uh, given by Bhavani Shankar. The other that you gave, in fact, that was a, uh, a more uh, uh, comprehensive presentation you have given that was on identifying vegetables value chain due to diligence and trade-offs from inequitable agri-food system in Bangladesh. In fact, here, you examined four scenarios, four or five scenarios. One was on a scaling aggregation and the presentation, uh, uh, you have rightly, I think the, the, the result that you have shown is uh, a greater proportion of loop farmers to these high demand markets. On the second scenario, a small markets 
market direct supply quota trade offs here you found that the increase the this particular mechanism increase the availability and affordability in local consumer markets this 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 third scenario you examined is the large market pool limits the effectiveness of reducing supply cost uh, here uh, and also you examine the cold storage issue that is farmer side cold storage and pipe changes that are key to control supply and the fifth scenario we analyzed the synergistic combinations are key to win in futures in fact these are definitely very technical in nature uh, uh, i need to go through the uh, go through the exact methodology that you have adopted the analytical tools you have used and the assumptions there in uh, i think <laughs> Uh, personally, I need more time to do that because I, since the morning, I was in, in a series of meetings, right from 10:30 to till uh, I joined your deliberations. But from my experience, uh, I can tell you something. I can tell the audience something that balancing we we feel a tremendous we we feel we we feel tremendous. A challenge in terms of bringing striking balance between the interest of producers and consumers in the country. Uh, I think this is equally applicable for any uh, developing country like ours, uh, where we have plenty of uh, the plenty of small and marginal farmers. In fact, they, they constitute the majority of farming households uh, who are uh, producers at one time and consumers uh, uh, who buy food, food and food items from the market at other time. So uh, at one point, that is beneficial to them. The, the price which is beneficial to them may not be uh, that much beneficial to them when they are consumers of the same item so so you can that is that is my one understanding during my experience i i felt it very tough to delineate the uh, uh, interest of the producers uh, which if i uh, disaggregate them into into seasons that is my first point the second point that i found that is if, say for the consumers, that the consumers they they find it uh, find it a very comfort comfortable when they find the price that is affordable to them, uh, especially for the essential food items. And if you talk about the nutritious foods, then definitely uh, this applies to them much more. Because the more the nutritious, the, the, the higher the prices. Uh, that is the usual scenario um, uh, in most of the countries. So that is, Bangladesh is not no exception. Now, now what we are doing in terms of uh, adopting policies to bring balance in the interest of the, uh, of the, of the producers as well as to the consumers. Uh, the government, through some policy uh, policy lever, uh, in, is intervening uh, in the input market as well as in the output market. Uh, for the farmers, government uh, offers incentive uh, to the uh, in terms of inputs, uh, uh, all sorts of inputs may be it fertilizer, be it uh, the seeds and other, uh, other, uh, other inputs. And in the, it also for some, for some products, especially for rice and wheat, government also offer uh, incentives in the output market as well. Uh, to, you know that uh, when there is the harvest, there is the tendency to, to falling prices and uh, that really hurts the farmer. So what, what the government do, 
the government uh, sets up a, 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 a floor price below which the the product the price of the product uh, do not uh, tend to uh, fall so that is uh, being done in especially in the rice and uh, wheat uh, production and marketing system and that is uh, applied through the uh, uh, organization of ministry of food and ministry of food so what they do they in, in, during the harvest season they, they set set up a price procurement price and they try to they try to uh, uh, procure rice and wheat from the farmers as well as from the millers uh, from the millers and this particular initiative is to um, uh, is to draw food stock for public food distribution in at, in uh, in one side and to and also to stabilize prices during the harvest season and the third uh, objective of this building up of a stock is to uh, is to distribute food to the consumers uh, in different uh, public distribution channels and one is definitely uh, again uh, to support the interest of the consumers in the form of open market sale that means they say they they set up a price that is below the market price and that's that's how they try to uh, stabilize market by 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 distributing those food low cost food items to the to the vulnerable people especially to the vulnerable people uh, and the, although the uh, and the third uh, way that that the government is uh, distributing uh, uh, food to the to the vulnerable people is the is the uh, we call it uh, free of cost in fact those are free of cost and as part of disaster response and these programs are as part of disaster response that means the distribution channels we we uh, primarily divide classify into two one is the monetized channel through which the foods are distributed with some price to the vulnerable people say for example the the fair price card system that government uh, the current government uh, took a few years back and the open market sale system that that was taken by the government long back in fact and the the other channels that are non monetized system that means the food those are distributed to the vulnerable people um, especially to the women to the uh, to the uh, special vulnerable pockets of the country geographical geographically vulnerable pockets of the country and those are free of cost <clears throat> so that's how uh, in fact those are targeted programs that means <clears throat> uh, those programs are targeted towards some people who are <clears throat> specially vulnerable and as i said it could be to the women it could be to to other uh, section of the population and that's how the the government protect the interest of the consumers so <clears throat> so these are the i think these are some of the initiatives that the government are being pursued for long for long and the research we we need to have some sort of research to see the efficacy and effectiveness of these particular interventions that means the the uh, the the intensive the incentivizing system of the producers through uh, supporting the inputs as well as in the output price in one hand as i said and the the supporting the interest of the consumers through the distribution system that are being administered by the government through different public food distribution channels uh, that means the monetize Food distribution system and the non-monetized. That means the targeted food distribution system. I think uh, we need to have some research to uh, draw the efficacy, comparative efficacy of these particular interventions, uh, how they are uh, see, uh, uh, serving the interest of the producers as well as to the consumers. I think I need to stop here. I have a lot more to say, but 
I understand that we are at the uh, end of the discussion. So, but anything, it, if anything comes to me, I will try my best to answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Rulam Talukdar. I found the talks highly informative and then interesting. And of course, that you indicated some of the issues that could be our future research endeavor. Uh, so now I, uh, we, we turn to our next panelist, uh, Mr. Mohammad Yusuf. Mr. Uh, Mohammad Yusuf is a director general of Department of Agricultural Marketing. Along his long career in finance division, he also contributed to develop bilateral relationship between Bangladesh and United Kingdom when he was second secretary at Bangladesh High Commission in UK. He has also working experience in designing and implementing development and management policy, sustainable water resource section plan, development project plan, project under ADB. So to name a few. So welcome uh, Mr. Mahmoud Yusuf uh, to this panel discussion. So my question uh, to you is that uh, uh, perhaps that you have seen the findings of uh, establishing or introducing cold storage at the farm gate. Uh, uh, so there is one scenario that you actually suggested in the workshop held in December 2019 at Planning Commission. Uh, so that scenario actually gives some insight about the supply side intervention might not be adequate to make a grief system more equitable for poorer consumers. So my question uh, uh, to you is, what are the programs and or actions being undertaken to Department of Agriculture Marketing to make vegetables markets more equitable for both consumers, producers and consumers? So now over to you, uh, Mr. Mohammed Yusuf. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mohammad Jahangir Alam, actually respected chair, distinguished uh, presenter, honorable participants, uh, respected panelists, good afternoon. Actually, it is true that Bangladesh uh, population, uh, cons population consumes less than FAO standard daily intake vegetables. Therefore, fruit and vegetables intake is very crucial for nutrition and health. On the other hand, non-farm population is increasing in Bangladesh. So market intervention for nutritional improvement is vital. If we can aggregate the farmers through looping, they will get fair prices. In addition, agriculture can boost production and supply of markets. And we are also happy to know that digital green loop has been working in Joshua uh, for last uh, few years. Here we, will, we would like to inform you that actually agricultural food system has three parts. First one is food supply system, which uh, includes production, input supply, processing, trade, etc. Second is food environment. This is uh, availability of food, food safety issues, low price, affordability, etc. And consumer behavior, which is actually health healthy foods choice or junk food choice, this is etc. Actually, agricultural production in our country has remarkably increased in the last two decades, what we have seen earlier, but the but small farmers are contributed more to the production, but they are, see, they are receiving only low, low prices. The small farmers have a small amount of produce, so they cannot bargain their prices with traders. And you will be happy no, no, to know that for the last, from the last year, we have started to form a, a farmer's marketing group in the whole country. We have started to provide training them. We are also bringing them in a e-marketing plat platform, but we have to aggregate them in a loop. We have seen that trust to each other is lacking in our country, which is measured impaired to aggregate the farmers in a loop. If they will aggregate their produce at the same place and send it to the market jointly, the transport cost will be deducted, as well as increase their bargaining power due to large amount. Supply in the local consumer market will be increased. So low farmers income through selling their vegetables will be increased. Moreover, the represented farmers only need to go market so that daily labors of the small farmers will also be saved. 
and you will be happy no, to know that we have undertaken a program to estimate the demand of all producers still we we yet to measure the actual demand of the producers especially for the perishable products which leads to surplus during the peak period we need to identify the specific challenges of the all all the actors separately we usually publish value chain analysis of some produce uh, in in our marketing department we have seen that the prices of the produce shows the erratic erratic behavior season to season plus price per fluctuation is very high and price difference between farmers gate to retailer shop is also a very high whole sellers try to exploit small farmers so our small farmers have little knowledge about the market price of uh, different local markets the consumer behavior to the food rep rapidly changed very less work was done due to change the desired behavior of the consumer so we make available the food but yet to ensure safe and nutritious food for all and regarding second question about the uh, about the uh, actually construction of the cold stress what i can say that you know prime objectives of them are to strengthening post harvest supply or value chain management so in this context as you know that uh, department of agriculture marketing has enacted an act in the name of agriculture marketing act in 2018 so the Uh, through this act dam has been entrusted with main responsibilities particularly reducing post harvest issues and value chain and marketing issues and last year in a workshop organized by you i have mentioned that dam is going to undertake a cold storage project and during preparation of uh, the of the feasibility study for for implementation of this project we have seen that major constraints in establishing efficient nutrition sensitive value chain is inefficient is inefficient handling and transportation poor technology technology for storage processing and packaging involvement of too many actors so also at present there are there are 400 private cold storage of only 42 in in our country but there is a dearth of low temperature storage facilities for other perishable products so in this context there uh, the dam has undertaken a project uh, for uh, which actually which will include all these facilities there will be a packaging there will be a, a sorting grading and also ethylene um, uh, ethylene uh, repainting chamber and low temperature multi chamber will be there so we are we are we are now going to uh, to prepare this project for submission for submission to the planning commission now dam has also undertaken another project for repair and maintenance of 82 uh, 82 um, uh, go downs actually presently owned by uh, um, uh, dam which is actually uh, handed to by from the local government and a small for uh, this uh, 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 among this um, um, uh, students actually a small farmers uh, during the peak season they store their grain crop uh, in the storages for ensuring fair prices and sell their product when price goes up this project actually was financed by the swedish government in 1979 and still it is going on now we are going we are we are have uh, undertaken this project for repair and maintenance and we will go to for if necessary if we are, if we also go to go for another new new, new constructions and also as uh, and you you also know that it's a uh, dam uh, is uh, operating farmers market in dhaka where a uh, union situation for farmers and consumers will be happened there you know bangladesh is currently exporting less than 1 billion dollar of uh, actually um, fruits and vegetables so in this context dam has come forward to establish a an, an export export to where uh, necessary staffs are posted there so today also we have seen with our honorable honorable minister for in, for we, how can we uh, increase our exports what can the one the what are the actions we can we can take so these are these are these are now we are we are planning we are also discussing with some donor agencies especially us aid and, and asian development bank and also world bank to uh, construct a pack house at, at my, near at the airport and where all these facilities will be 
uh, will be included there and also from the farms gate to uh, direct uh, pack house there will be a, there will be necessary to actually to, uh, ma, 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 to transport uh, unit uh, refrigeration uh, transport systems we have, we need to pulling systems so we are working we are working on this uh, yeah. and you will be also uh, you know that bangladesh government of bangladesh has formulated a um, uh, good ag ag agricultural practice by, by, by uh, uh, two, two uh, three months back action plan also already prepared at present fresh horticulture produce especially fruits and vegetables are exported particularly to the countries with a large uh, bengali diaspora so to however to access the mainstream market exporter must comply comply the rigorous uh, rigorous requirements of importing countries so the dam is also working on on on, on this and at this moment we are we are we we, we are um, uh, we we are we have formulated a, 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 a dpp which is the development project for for, 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 for storing onion uh, in farmers group, group level uh, pro producing in areas which help to reduce post harvest loss and maintain the onion price stable and equitable for poorer countries we have also undertaken another pro project which is submitted to the planning commission we will construct some um, uh, some um, house for for only for for putting the uh, potato uh, and so that it ca it can be kept for three months and sell the potato to the to the market after three months when the prices goes up goes up so in this context we are doing these things and we also taken some other responsibilities which actually due to time constraint uh, i am not been able to uh, actually uh, um, uh, talk to here so if you need anything yeah, i think it's uh, my uh, my uh, email address is here so anybody can uh, can uh, actually um, send in their email uh, email and uh, so we can communicate with them anything is necessary i think i am ready to to answer uh, through email thank you very much here yeah thank you uh, mr mahmud yusuf i found the talks highly informative and very interesting i'm sure that the uh, many project team and the audience would love to hear more uh, from you all the very high level policy uh, makers in the country in the sector uh, so but be, due to due to time constraint actually that we are closing we are supposed to have one uh, q and answer session to the policy makers uh, so the panelists so i see there are a couple of questions but uh, obviously I, I just want to make sure to the uh, uh, audience that uh, those who made the, the questions here mm -hmm. that will be get, uh, get uh, back to you with the answers but this moment because of the time constant that we can't go with that one sorry for that so now we are almost at the end of the the workshop so before i'm going uh, to thank you all so may i request all the panelists uh, uh, to open your uh, video on so make your video on so that uh, we can have a have a photo together Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Susan. Alam bhai. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, you. Susan and uh, Dr. Nazmun Maharotnapa. Uh, so now just uh, I'm going to end. Uh, so thank you. I found the talks and the comments, questions, and responses highly informative and interesting. I hope you feel the same. So it is clear that the time is ripe for a big push to put perishable, nutritious foods, fruit and vegetables, at the heart of the effort to improve nutrition equitably in Bangladesh and most probably in South Asia. So this will need both a greater push to encourage self-provisioning, but also using markets to deliver these foods to the broader public. We hope that in some small way, the work described here today will see, uh, see some of the momentum. Thank you to all of you, the speakers, the audience, for your contributions to the workshop. It is highly appreciated. A special thanks to the uh, panelists uh, 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 who made this webinar at very high level. Uh, and a very special thanks to Namita, Sushan, and the, all the mini team members uh, for, and the excellent communication team at Digital Green for their work in putting this workshop together. So for those, of you interested in knowing more about the mini project, please do visit our website address on the chat box. 
there we have links to the academic papers, photos, blogs, etc. We would like to thank you all once again for your valuable time and encouraging questions. We'll remain in touch with you over email to share the recording. At this worrying time, we dearly wish for the best of health for you, indeed all of the Bangladeshi, South Asian, South Asian people. Thank you and goodbye.